So in a way, this painting and this video itself is my redemption. After I had filmed my last painting and recorded the voiceover, my thoughts became a lot clearer, as they tend to. In retrospect, what I couldn't put into words, I've already expressed before. It just felt weird to experience it firsthand. I'm much better at processing things from relation or relatability than I am at firsthand experience. <laughs> That's what drew me to like astrology and numerology initially, see how everything was connected, fluid even. But separation is like really made up. So it might very well be an autistic trait. But I like to think of myself more as Bumblebee from Transformers, how he speaks with the radio. That's what my mind is like. Now that I'm a bit detached from the emotion, I was getting at the stance I analyzed in an old college essay in which I wrote about identity politics using the fictional Janie from The Eyes Are Watching God and the non-fictional, albeit fictional accounts of Sally Hemings, sprinkled with references to the novel Caucasia, which if I'm remembering right, those books were about people written in a way that illustrated a raw, I don't like the word, but I'm going to use it, I think, gritty reality. It wasn't my thesis, but a major theme was that if you have to disown an aspect of yourself to be accepted or belong, then you aren't really being accepted in the group, which takes a toll on a person psychologically. For them, in the, the characters of those books, it was a black and white issue, literally. However, I don't think anything is really that simple. I often have felt pressure to change and or conform in a myriad of ways, especially in my art as of late. Titling pieces has always been hard for me. I have this reluctance to title something in a way that's too personal or too intimate that it's like off-putting to someone who might want to engage with it. So I've reserved certain things for other mediums like music or stories that I've written Though, I question if I'm molding myself back from my creative potential in doing that. My favorite title ever is The Lush Illusions That Blossom from the Blackness of My Contusions. I think I came up with that in 2017 or 2018. It reeks of Fiona Apple, but at the time, I hadn't even discovered Fiona Apple. So, it's just like, uncanny now. While I was painting this one, I thought of another old verse of mine. Model and chasm, composed of a million wings, birthed the butterfly with steel wings. I know it's a little weird, but... I've been listening to many biographic videos. I came across one about the artist Frida Kahlo. She was the first artist I've heard express any similar sort of sentiment, although it was obvious her art was intimate as she was, like, most notably known for her self-portraits. I hope this doesn't come across as rambling. The art and the artist aren't separate enemies at all. I haven't heard other artists or creators speak on this topic, but for me, there's no way. Art is about essence, and essence permeates whatever it touches. I realized art was an essence-based sort of thing when I was studying songwriting a while back. By listening to certain songs over and over, I felt like I could identify songwriters by like their, cadien their, their cadence. Bound to You in Burlesque was written by Sia, and to a lesser extent, I assume, Christina Aguilera. It is undeniably similar to Diamond, also written and demoed by Sia, but it's, like, recognized as being a Rihanna song, because she's who ended up accepting it. If you compare it to Sia's body of work as a solo artist, the correlation, like, within the cadence and, like, how she enunciates certain words, because she naturally has, like, an accent, it's really undeniable. It could be said about other artists, but that's a rabbit hole, so I'm going to stop there. Artists have their strengths, and I think you can admire and abhor them for said attributes, but you can't separate those attributes from them and how they can appear in their work. This has never been a problem for me, as I understand that like people are flawed and are allowed to be that way, and I don't, I don't know, I don't really hold anybody up on, like, that high of a pedestal in my mind. Additionally, the point Hozier made in a promo video for Wasteland Baby, art is very much political. People are innately political. The best example of that, I think, is um, Barack Obama, when he talked about how he 
like he used his relationship with Michelle to better like how he would be perceived in his political career which I don't know when I heard that it it rubbed me the wrong way but I'm not anybody so it doesn't matter how I feel but if I was Michelle I would have given him a side eye like wait what the fuck anyway (laughs) I've inadvertently tried to steer clear of politics because it made me uncomfortable thinking about it now the only political-esque thing I watch is um the fab socialism youtube channel and that's like only on occasion I see slash saw myself reflected in Maureen from Rent when she was mooing on the subway. But at the same time, I'm also Joanne. I'm the tiger in a cage, but I'm also keeping myself from the sun. I don't want to choose between the lady or the tiger, you know, not to get all William Blake either. But I feel like I'm very much both, you know. I'm very much my own sort of intersection. I'm very much my own crossroads, an anomaly. But I just feel like I have enough problems and my head is so full, so burgeoning, full of things. Yet I have this like nagging memory of watching Stacey and uh, Chin interview with Style Like You, where she was discussing how people perceived her and people assumed she was vegan because of how they perceived her mindset. In her own words, she was gunning for utopia. I then titled my Tumblr after that because it resonated with me so deeply and it still does now to this day. I think we should all strive for a sort of, like, our own personal utopia. Where I am now, I've been for several years. I know the pre-established things don't serve me. To take from my favorite Mae West quote about marriage, marriage is a lovely institution, but I'm not crazy enough yet. In gist, what I'm saying is that through learning about these other people, I realize that it matters a lot who I am and where I come from. Was just It sounds stupid to be like, it doesn't matter. that That's ever what I thought, but that's what I thought. And that's kind of, I need to change my mind. Nina Simone, low-key, really wanted to be that bitch. Not unlike Flo Millie. That's what, how it feels to be free suggests to me anyway. But as a black bipolar woman, that wasn't ever going to be her reality. And it's heartbreaking to me from the perspective of another neurodivergent person because I can relate. Maybe it's self-defeating. Probably, but my brain hasn't really found another way to think yet. I don't want to make others uncomfortable, but I am not comfortable. I have never been comfortable, and I refuse to be complacent or patient. I think my art reflects, more than anything else, disenfranchisement. I am always in the middle places I've decided to call it, inspired partly by Hope There's Someone the version I know by Antony and the Johnsons. It's also reminiscent of the vampire feeling from a book I read several years ago, Vagrants. True poverty is a choice. Thinking critically that as long as you have a choice or an option, you aren't truly impoverished. The nuance of the quote is very important because it's not saying that it, it the nuance of it matters. I do have a choice, so I'm not completely impoverished, yet the choices are limited and the experience is a bit impoverished as my path is so heavily negated. If, if that makes sense. So I can't be comfortable with being like super anonymous. And I really strive to be someone I would like or admire someone I respect from a respectful distance because I don't engage with people. Being of color, eccentric, neurodivergent, and mentally ill, I guess, I'm not so much a girl interrupted or a bell jar type, but I am adjacent. I feel adjacent in most things, not a part of. Art is all I really have. I hope people can appreciate some aspect of it without me stripping it of my essence. And my essence is that... That grit. (laughs) Anything else is foreign or an illusory escape that makes it harder to function in reality. I learned that. I learned that very much the hard way, perhaps. The success, acknowledgement, renown, the statements made with words, creations, and actions are dictated by who says them and when. It's not even entirely natural, the process of, of who's chosen. 
import to algorithms. Uh, it feels like a waiting game, and the time is never right. It's hard to see the limitations from my... Like, it's hard to fathom the limitations sometimes, and it's, it's I try to get out of my head, but it's very hard to. I'm still making things, partly, partly because I'm a machine, also because it's all I know.